Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Susie with Gemini Connect and today we're going to talk about how to back up photos and videos from your Android smartphone. So I just did a video talking about how we back up photos and videos from our cameras, but Jerry Greenwald saw that video and actually asked the very relevant question of how do you prefer to transfer videos and pics from your Samsung phone to your Mac? And that is an excellent question. Um, it's actually a very difficult thing to do. And so I thought I'd do a video talking about several ways of how you can go about doing that. And thank you, Jerry, for specifically calling out Samsung phones and Macs because those are the two devices that I use. Uh, I have not used an iPhone since the iPhone 3GS. So if you use an iPhone, uh, I think you do have a thing called AirDrop, which makes it very easy to transfer your photos and videos off of your device to your Mac. And that is something that as Android users, we do not have. So that is why I think this is a really relevant video because there are several ways to get your media off of your phone and they're not super intuitive. I really recommend getting a micro SD card if your phone allows for it to insert into your phone and to give you just more capacity uh, for shooting photos and videos. And this is really relevant because photos are much bigger these days as are videos, especially if you're shooting in the 4K format. So if you can, try to get a micro SD card, um, ideally 64 gigs, 128 gigs, 256 gigs, uh, whatever capacity um, is big enough for your needs. So this right here is a 128 gig micro SD card. It's exactly what I have inside of this smartphone. And I don't want to show you how I put it in and take it out because it is a little finicky. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't use this method. But one way that you can get your photos and videos off of your phone is to take the micro SD card out of your phone and use the um, SD card adapter that usually comes with these memory cards and stick that micro SD card inside of the adapter and insert that into your computer. And if you are lucky enough to have a SD card reader built into your computer, you can do that. If not, you can also buy a SD card adapter. If you need to get a card reader, they're super cheap, really easy to come by. I will leave a link to a um, SD card reader that I've used for years and highly recommend doing that if you need to use this method. Another thing that you can do that again is not the best method, but if you really need to do this, you can take the USB cable that ideally this is the one that came with your phone because this method as well can be really finicky. And if you use a cheap or a knockoff USB-C um, cable, then it won't always work. But you can insert this directly into your computer and take the USB-C portion here and plug it into your phone. And then once you do that, it might take a little while, but you'll get a notification on both your phone and your laptop. And your laptop might freak you out because it will say it can't access device storage, make sure your device is unlocked. So what you wanna do first is actually go to your phone and say allow access to phone data. So enable that and then go over to your computer and then say okay. And then wait a few seconds because this usually takes a little while. But at that point, the um, Android file transfer app right here should pop up. So that's another thing too. Make sure that your computer has the Android file transfer app downloaded to it. And then once you do that, you can go through this process of connecting your phone, allow the permissions from your phone to your computer, and then eventually you'll have this um, screen pop up on your computer. And again, from here, it gets a little complicated because it does depend on your settings on where you chose to store your photos and videos. So if you elected to have those on your phone, then that's one section here, and then there's another one for your card. So for me, I do have all of my media currently being recorded internally to my phone. So what I wanna do is click on that, make sure that's selected, and then I'm gonna go down here to DCIM and double click that. And then again, here, you're gonna have a bunch of different folders depending on what kind of camera apps you have installed on your phone. And for me, my internal um, folder is right here, camera. So I'll double click on camera. And again, this is a really slow process. So as you open up a lot of these folders, especially if they have a lot of media, it's gonna take a little while and you might even see the beach ball start rolling on your computer. 
but have patience and wait it out. Okay, there we go. So we finally got into this folder here and I warned you, right? It was gonna take a little while because it did. But if you have patience, it will eventually open up. And here you see all of the media that again is stored on my phone. And you can go through the same process if those photos are on your card. But again, be careful if you click around because that beach ball will come up and you'll have to wait it out. So now that we're in here, unfortunately, you cannot preview any of this media. Uh, again, I don't want to double click because it's really fragile, really easy to lose a connection to your phone. So the easiest way to figure out what media is what is to sort it by date and time. So again, hopefully that's accurate on your device. For, you know, for example, let's use everything from the 30th. We'll go ahead and copy or just select all that media from that date. Let's so make a folder and then just drag and drop that media to your computer. And again, this might take a little while depending on how many files you're trying to transfer over. And as I was doing this yesterday, I think I had you know, a total of 30 items, very similarly. And for some reason, it would only copy about half the items at a time. And then it would time out, I would lose connection, I'd have to repeat this entire process just to get all those images off. So this is not my favorite way of getting media off of my phone, but if I absolutely need to and nothing else works, then this will totally do it a pinch. So besides the two hardware versions of getting your media off of the phone, there's one other thing that is newer to Samsung smartphones that helps you get your media off. And so here in the smartphone, we're gonna go over to gallery. And these are all the photos and videos that I've shot recently. And we're gonna go over to, let's find a video because videos are really big files. Actually, this is media that I do wanna get off the phone because it's gonna be an upcoming video. So I'm gonna go into and select three of these video clips here and then go down to share. And once you do that, you'll actually see on the very top here, there's a relatively new function called share large files. And that allows you to share up to two gigabytes of files per day. But again, there's a problem with that in that it is limited to file size. So some of these files are too big, they exceed the two gig limit. So I'm not gonna be able to get all the media off. So let's go ahead and try that with our biggest file here. Nope, that's the big offender. So we'll go over and get these smaller guys. Do the same thing, and if it works properly, you'll see a link share come up. You can actually copy that link, and you can send it to somebody or send it to yourself. Uh, the easiest thing I find is just to go over to Gmail, send myself an email. So then if I go over to my email, we'll see that that link has already arrived. And if you click on it, you'll see all of those media files that you just sent to yourself are right here and they're available for download. So click that download button at the bottom, select the items that you want, and then hit download again. And then those files will start to download to your computer. So this is a pretty new function that again, I'm seeing on Samsung phones. I think it's a Samsung solution that uh, I hope gets continued to be supported because right now there's just not a very fast and easy way otherwise through Google to get your photos and videos off of your phone. So the next few solutions I'm gonna go over are actually app-based. So you're gonna need to download these apps from Google Play. The first one is Google Photos. So if you have a Google account, you probably already have Google Photos available as an app. So you can go over from your desktop computer and just click on that icon there and you'll come into your photos. So you again have to go through your phone, make sure that you have the Google Photos app downloaded and set up and synced to your account. And right now I apparently have not synced the account since February. So it's missing a lot of my newer photos. I think right now they're still uploading. But as long as you have those settings set up, then you'll find all of your photos and videos from your phone here in Google Photos. So you can go in and preview those images, share them with people, download them. If I wanna download, I'll go right here to these more options and just hit download. And then those photos and videos will download to my computer. 
And the final solution I'm gonna go over is actually the one that I prefer the most. And it has to do with a photo sharing service called SmugMug. And SmugMug has been around for a long time. In fact, I think over a decade ago, I was using SmugMug to upload my photos from my camera and just to organize them and have online copies of my photos. And so that service has been around for a long time, but it's been nicely supported. So if you use it in the past and have your doubts about it, I would take a look at it again because over the past few years, they've really stepped it up. They've changed the design. It is much easier to use and it's relatively cheap because SmugMug, they have a free version of the account, but you're better off just buying some version of it to have that membership and keep your photos secure. So if you have um, a SmugMug account, you can go ahead and download the app to your phone. And again, this is a great service, not only for your smartphone media, but also for media coming directly from your camera. Because as far as I know, there's unlimited storage. And that is one of the reasons why I chose this service over other services such as Photo Shelter, which is another popular one. But Photo Shelter really limits the amount of data that you can upload. So at SmugMug, you get unlimited uploads. And I've been taking really big advantage of that. Right now it has all of my high-res photos on this service, as well as videos. So a lot of my B-roll is actually being stored on SmugMug. So when you're logged in, you're gonna have to make up your photo structure depending on how you want things organized. But here, so all of my high-res photos get stored here. I also have a um, folder for all my video B-roll. But the nice thing that is related to this video has to do with these little folders down here called the Android Backup. So if you have a SmugMug plan and you have the app on your phone, uh, this is something you do when you first you know, set up the app, but you can go into the gear icon on your phone and there should be an option here that allows you to create an automatic backup. And when you do that, you have to make the folder that you know, is shown here, the Android backup folder. And with that folder created and the settings set up, you can actually automatically have all of your photos from your phone upload to this folder on SmugMug. And it's something you can access from your phone or from your computer. So it's a great way to download your photos and videos from your phone to your computer using SmugMug. This is one of many features of SmugMug that I absolutely love. And I'll do another video talking more about how I use SmugMug as my workflow for other photos and videos. But for now, I hope this was helpful. Um, SmugMug, again, is my preferred way of getting media off of my phone because these other methods are, they take a long time, they're not super consistent, and they're not very reliable. So SmugMug has been the most reliable out of all of those services. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if it was, please give it a thumbs up and a comment on how you like to get your media off of your Samsung phones. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.